It's time to talk about that age old question again, Forger versus Nomad. And the reason I'm gonna do this little video is because I'm gonna take a quick peek at the new Polygon tools that are in Forger app, and then talk about where things could go for both Forger and Nomad. So let's dive right in. So only a very short video this week, and really we're going over old ground. We're looking back at the history of Forger versus Nomad, which we've done about four times now over the last two or three years. Um, this, obviously, if you don't know, uh, and I'm sure you do if you follow me on this channel, um, this is Forger app. Ah, oh, no, it's not. This is Nomad Sculpt, and it's a sculpting app that we've all grown to love over the, the last few years. Um, and the videos that I put out mostly are around this. So I used to cover ZBrush way, way more, and I still do commercially. I do a lot of ZBrush training, but Nomad is one of my big loves now. But what goes on underneath Nomad is it's a sculpting app, and you're sculpting on high polygon geometry that we we voxel remesh. So, that, so underneath, it's a mess, and we've got no ability to do any um, low polygon work. Now, we have done a couple of videos where we've said, this is what you know one or two ways you can do some of the low poly work uh, and i'll put the video up above there so you can have a look at um when i've actually tried to do some low poly work but it doesn't work in terms of the core functions so there's no point edge and face access or anything like that and one of the things we are crying out for is the ability to do that so over the last couple of months i've been looking at forger app and where we got to with with nomad and forger now Nomad is clearly the leader. It's got um, all the new features like the subsurface scattering and um, the way the interface is laid out. Everything overall works better than Forger, but it isn't game over. And that's what this video is a little bit about. Um, in that if Maxon carry on developing it, because um, it's now obviously owned by Maxon who own Cinema 4D, then we could get um, they could get back in the race because adding the features that that uh, we see here in Nomad is is pretty much within their gift. They they know how to do it and um, they've done it with Cinema 4D. They now own ZBrush, so we could see all kinds of things come in with that. But the thing that they have have added, which I'm about to show you now, is we'll explore it a little bit here with the same model. So that's the model that we were just playing with. And let's have a look at the underlying topology. So let's take our multi-resolution all the way back down. And this model came out of Forger app, not Nomad. And if you look with the wireframe on, we've got a very traditional uh, underlying polygonal model. So um, I'm not going to, I'm going to show it you. I'm not doing a tutorial this week. I'm just going to show you the possibilities of what Forger app will do for, for you. Now I'm showing you in Nomad because this video is about Nomad versus Forger as usual. But uh, just bear in mind as we switch over now to uh, having a look at Forger app that Nomad can't do this. So even though it isn't in its, in its best state yet, it, it, Forger isn't at a point where I would say it's fully uh, usable. I've tried to use it. I've tried to do articles for 3D World magazine, which you'll see this month if you do follow that. Um, so going into December, you'll see an article where I'm using Forger app, but it's not quite where I want it to be. So let's switch over and have a look at what I'm talking about with the core features in there. So this is Forger app now. So now I'm on the subscription model here. So a lot of you won't like that. You won't use it because of that. And I perfectly understand that. Um, a subscription model can be quite limiting if you're not in the, um, if you're not a professional. Um, and some of you don't mind paying it if, it if it's something that you can make a few quid with. Um, so that's not what this video is about. And I'm not going to talk about that or I'm not going to have an opinion on that uh, in this particular video. So what we're looking at, that same model there, is now in a mode called uh, modeling mode. So you just literally go to the top and switch it to modeling mode from sculpt mode. If you stay in sculpt mode, as so, you pretty much, um, you've got the same tool set that you're used to seeing in over in Nomad Sculpt. So you've got things like standard clay, move, flatten, layer, inflate, all the things that were there actually before Nomad, um, really, because as Forger was the, 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 the more standard app before Nomad came along. 
Um, and what that means is, um, so if you're in sculpt mode, you get access to things like the move tool and things like that. So you can do the things that you're used to doing. Uh, and I'm here actually in symmetry mode. So I've got symmetry I've switched on here, which is, I'm going to be honest, is very buggy for me at the moment. Um, and I do have to, I'm constantly switching in and out of this while, while I'm using it um, if I get problems. Um, but that, I think, is quite an early bug, and I'm pretty sure that that's going to get resolved at some point. Um, so uh, switch out of sculpt mode into model mode. And now you get a very standard set of tools that you would see in, in software like Maya or Blender or any polygonal modeling program. One of the ones that I use a lot is, is Silo. It's still a very cheap um, modeling solution. And in here, you can do what I've just done with the sculpting mode. You can put your symmetry on. Um, and then you can start manipulating e either object mode, face mode, edge mode, or point mode. And again, if you're from a box modeling world or a polygonal modeling world, this is all very familiar to you. Um, so basically, you can just go and do, uh, let's, pick, let's pick a different mode. So let's go over to uh, point mode. And you can then just pick points and manipulate them. Or you can select a group of points and then manipulate those. And you can do things like relax and all, all the things that you would expect from a polygonal modeler. And obviously, you can do that in different modes. So we could go over to, let's go back and we'll just go over to um, uh, face mode. And we could, we could manipulate single faces. We can um, use that selection tool and grab a large chunk of them like so, I'll just do that again, like so. And then you can move large chunks of them. You can use the, the you know, the tool to scale it. You can rotate it and do, do everything that we're, we're, we're used to doing. If you go to face mode, for example, let's go on to um, one of these parts here. And um, you see me making mistakes as I'm moving around there. In fact, no, we'll go on the back of the body here and we'll just work on his shoulder, for example. Um, so if you were to go uh, face mode, and you were to go uh, hold down this select and we just select some of these polygons around here and then we can use quite a few tools up here so we've got extrude for example and it gives you this little yellow icon which i, I do quite like this and then you get an extrude function like so now i selected one up here as well so obviously that's that's not going to be ideal um, and that's one of the, the the things that i want to see improved is that it, it, it's a little bit awkward to do some of this stuff you have to be really careful what you're doing um, so there's a, a basic extrude. You've got things like, so if you're still in face mode, you've got things like, um, or you've got loop cut. Um, and then you've got all of these, again, more standard tools. I'm not covering them today, but you, you, you will probably be aware of them. So bridge, line cut, loop cut, and then weld points. So you can do a lot of the polygonal or polygon manipulation that you would want in, um, in, in a polygon modeler. So, my, my big point about this video is that these tools are here now. And if you add in other programs, so if you think about what we've got now, so obviously there's Nomad and Forger, but we've also, also got programs like Cozy Blanket, so where you can manipulate geometry more. And I hope that becomes a modeler, fully rounded modeler. That would be fantastic. But at the moment, if you want to mess around with raw polys like this, this this is this is probably the best solution that we do actually have. And and I, I'm showing you on a model there that I've, this is the model I've been learning on. But if we were to just save this, and then we just head over to the basic geometry, you can just bring in a, a, a primitive um, and 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 start literally from scratch. This is exactly how I do it in in other programs. Um, so for, so for example, Maya and Silo. So you open it up and convert it, and that means you can now edit it. And then you've got face manipulation tools like so. This is where it can get a bit problematic with the symmetry. What I have been doing is I've been bringing in an already divided cube um, that's that's divided uh, down this center line. Um, now, you, you may have better success w than me with this, um, but it, it's one of those things where it's taken me too long at the moment for me to, to, to warrant, um, I, or I'm not comfortable yet doing a video on these tools until they are a little bit more, or two things really. One, I'm more established with, with these particular tools in this program, or two, they're fixed. Um, and, and at this point, I wouldn't be confident that, that I'm telling you 
um, well enough uh, about all of the tools. What I'm basically saying is there could be, it's not easy to learn this. So one of the things I struggled with is finding this menu here, believe it or not, because um, this is the subdivide menu here. Um, and I want to, for example, go up and do object and then subdivide and it's not there. So I would want little things like that improving, just literally making these things a little bit um, uh, more user-friendly. And again, some of that will be that I'm just um, not at that point yet, um, I, I, and I am learning quick, you know, quickly. I am I'm trying it, and I'm, I'm trying to get to a point where I can teach you, but I'm not comfortable with it yet. However, it is very, very promising that, that there's a lot in here that, that is giving me confidence that we'll be, you know, we, we will be using this um, as a viable polygon tool very, very shortly. This is for the article that I'm doing for 3D World, so you might want to explore it over there if you, if you get time. Um, and it's a non-symmetrical object which made things so much better. Um, the wireframe you can switch on up here, um, so you can do, uh, sorry, up here, display settings, so you've got wireframe on and off. Um, and things like backface culling that you will be used to in other programs that are quite similar, grid on and off, and actually quite similar o o over in Nomad as well. Um, and obviously, that you know, keep switching between your modes. And then the big thing um, that, that I do a lot is I switch between sculpt and model. Um, and the reason I do that is because I want to use some of the sculpting tools on here as well. So things like moving it around and, and being able to, you know, being able to manipulate this is is it, well, you definitely need to be able to get in and use tools like, for example, like relax. Um, so as you're polygon modeling, you want to be able to get in and you know re relax the you know relax the mesh down um, and also subdivide it. Um, so the big one obviously is the move tool and you know a lot of a lot of the work that you've done in the polygonal um section or the poly poly polygonal mode you might want to then come in and tweak it in this mode um if not it, it you know it can be quite difficult to to, to get these nice shapes that you that, that you would want and that's you know that's the same actually in blender there's a lot of times when i'm using blender i'll switch between the polygonal modeling and um, I do a lot of smoothing and moving around in the, those kind of modes. So it's it's not in any way a broken program. It's compromised at the moment. There are still things that, that, that need to be improved. And also it's not as easy I was, as I would want it to be to learn. But it's very, very, very promising. And I honestly think if they push this piece of software alongside what they're going to do with ZBrush and Cinema 4D. They'll have a very, very um, successful suite of tools, and um, it's already super successful, so you know that, that would be the wrong thing to say. But as a mobile sculpting modeling um, uh, addition, then this would be a very, very, you know, a very viable, um, worthwhile addition. If they get it right, um, and that's the big thing, they've got, they've got to push this piece of software now to the next level, which I am pretty sure they already are doing. So well worth a look if you've got the subscription. Um, you know, that's a choice that you will have to make. Um, the, the fact that it gives you that nice clean topology that you can then take to Cozy Blanket and on into your other programs is, is, a, is a great thing to see. Um, we just need more of it. And if it's going to get back to being number one, it's got a lot of work to do um, uh, with, with the other side of things. So the sculpting, painting and the um, post-processing that you get in Nomad, which obviously, as we know, uh, uh, and I think you'd agree with me, is absolutely fantastic. I hope you're all having a great week. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other people who might like this kind of content. And if you're giving us a thumbs up, then why not subscribe to the channel uh, down below, hit the notification bell so we can let you know when we upload new content, which is every week, as you know.